I've been working on the army roll as a way to store more clothes with a smaller footprint. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and I'm going to talk about these storage bins. So I've been practicing, I posted some of this on Instagram, but I've been practicing army rolling my clothing. I have like a stack of stuff that's not um, rolled yet um, for storage back in the van when I get back in the van. Um, I just think this will be a more efficient way to store my clothes. The biggest problem is um, telling which shirt is which. I'm going to come a little closer to the camera. Ooh, this sleeve always rolls up. It gets on my nerves. All right, so let's go. <laughs> There's so much muscle in this arm. It's just fighting my sleeves. No, not really. Uh, but from this side, it's really hard to tell what t-shirt it is like I can kind of see signs of like decorativeness if I really poke at it I'm like okay this is the full metal alchemist shirt and this is my my unicorn pumping iron like I can kind of get a hint of the image so the only downfall of this is I can't really see which black t-shirt it is and I wear a lot of black t-shirts mostly because um working backstage you pretty much wear stage blacks a lot of times you can get away with like something on your shirt. I have a couple of shirts that's totally plain black. Um, for rehearsals and stuff, it really doesn't matter. There's a lot of times it won't matter and I'll just pull whatever t-shirt. But there are going to be times where it's going to be difficult to tell which t-shirt is which. So that's the only downside. When you're packing to fly like this, it's different because once you get to your location, you won't be storing them like this. And if all of your black shirts are just plain black shirts, obviously it wouldn't matter. Right now I'm wearing a Meyer Sound shirt. The image logo on it is so small, even when I've had to be in all black, it's been fine. Whereas if I need to be backstage in all black, a giant Pikachu on the front of my shirt is not going to work. A giant yellow Pikachu definitely will catch light. And for those of you who don't understand sort of the difference between uh, or the reasoning for stage blacks, the reasoning for stage blacks is basically you can disappear a little bit more. If you're wearing obviously a bright white shirt, um, then it's going to catch a light. <laughs> um, whereas if you're wearing black, you almost disappear. You can kind of be in the background you you're not catching light you're you're fading from the foreground which is usually the actors on stage in costume so you can sneak out and push things on stage and all kinds of stuff like that um so there are situations where i want either an all black shirt or something with a logo so tiny like it's almost indistinguishable and that's times when i'm actually working backstage when I'm in the booth pushing buttons or talking to a board operator that's different, doesn't really matter, nobody can see me. I'm usually behind the audience in an enclosed space. But most stage people tend to de default to stage blacks in their wardrobe. I have more black than anything and that's just come from working in theater. Um, so that's that. But that wasn't even what I wanted this video to be about. That's just why the couch isn't junky just to be junky. I am figuring out my packing to go back into the van. Um, but everyone was very concerned about these bins when I decided that it was time to move on from them. What you guys don't realize is like plywood with my full 300 plus body weight has been pushing down on these bin lids for a while. And so if I get really close, maybe you guys can see it. This is what the top of this bin lid looks like. So it's not like it's in great shape anyway. It's a little bit beat up. There are times like it's cracked right there. There are times I kind of half had it on there because I just fiddled it into place real quick, let the plywood drop and went to bed because I was tired. So these things are a bit beat up anyway. <laughs> like it's not like the lids are looking great. Now the bins themselves aren't terrible actually. Um, the bins are in much more decent shape then the lids, I'm put the lids down, but I have a couple of things in here that I'll throw out. Um, yeah, the bins themselves aren't in as bad a shape. I mean, they're pretty much in gr great-ish shape, but even this one, like this corner is bent. Um, this corner is bent and cracked. Um, so it's like, 
these these bins have served their purpose for quite a while they're not in perfect condition anyway they're not useless but it's not like i'm replacing something in pristine condition as you move forward and change up what you're doing in your van there might be times where you have to move on from something that's not completely useless yet but also like it's done its time it's done its job and it's held up for as long as you need it to so like everybody was like trying to figure out a way for me to like preserve these bins and keep these bins and like keeping stuff in a space as small as a minivan is not the goal <laughs> the goal is always getting rid of stuff <laughs> um, or making things more efficient for a more full life in a small space and if a more full life means I've gotten a decent amount of use out of not that expensive bins honestly don't remember how much they cost but like the reason why you get plastic bins is because they most of them don't break the bank um, and there's not a space in the van suitable for these bins anymore and I think like that's okay it's okay to move on to the next thing and there was a good like sock analogy let me get a pair of socks so I'm gonna get a pair of socks for this analogy um there's a podcast I used to listen to called the happiness project and she was talking about um our reluctance to get rid of things and I thought the sock, sock analogy was a really, really good one. So here's a pair of fairly decent socks, and I've gone through this. Now, every once in a while, you get a hole in one of the socks. I have a toe. It's hard to see. I have a toe that's kind of wearing out in one of these. But it's not fully gone yet. You can still wear them. It feels silly to a lot of people to throw out these socks when they're still wearable. Well, let's say I've gotten to the point where there's a full hole in this sock, but this sock is perfect. Technically, socks work as a set. Unless you do the Mitch Match sock thing, which is cool if you do it right and looks trashy if you do it wrong. <laughs> but let's say, you know, you have one really good sock and this one is basically your toe is slipping out of it. It's not really like providing, you know, a maximum sock potential. But this one's still perfect. And a lot of people will be reluctant to throw out the set because this sock is still good. But that's ignoring the fact that this sock has a giant hole in it and is useless and socks work as a pair. Most humans, forgive me any humans that don't, have two feet. And so for a pair of socks to work, it needs to be a pair. So by default, if one goes down, the pair is dead. Unless you do the match, 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 stock thing, which is totally fine. Honestly, I do it. I actually have an intentional match, match pair in my drawer. Um, or if you have completely identical socks, like if you have just a drawer full of the same white or black sock, then obviously you can mix and match them as socks wear out, throw them out and still have a pair. But let's say this pair was unique in your drawer. You don't know where to get another pair. And at this point, you're down to one good sock that doesn't match anything in your drawer. And let's say you're a person who prefers matched socks. The sock is useless. Just because on its own, it's fine, doesn't mean, doesn't justify either just keeping it or keeping the pair when you know one of the socks is completely worn out and no longer useful. And I sort of try to take that philosophy into other parts of life. There's a point where something still works, but you found a way to move on to something more useful. And so you need to let go of that thing, even if it's not completely broken. And then at that point, it becomes, do I give it away? Do I sell it? Is it worth selling? Um, and you can sell broken things. Like broken computers will sell for parts, pretty decently on eBay. I've done it. I'm not a big fan of selling. Selling gets on my nerves. You have to hold the object until it's sold. You know, there's making sure you get paid. That's how you, there's how you have to get the thing to the person. Like I hate selling stuff. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. Um, even though at one point I was, I had a little, uh, a little eBay thing going on that was really working for me, um, where I was getting something at a really low cost and, and probably making twice as much but it was I was getting it for a couple of bucks and I was selling it for about 10 bucks on eBay and then sort of my source ran out um but but I'm not going to go into that 
And, uh, but I'm not a big fan of it, <laughs> especially not while living mobile. Right now I live in a van and I don't, you know, when you have a garage and you can just put stuff in it and sort of like sell it, you know, as it's sold and the amount of time it sits there until you can complete all the steps and see, but that's getting into another subject. There's things you can do to get rid of it, but it's okay to acknowledge that it's lived out its usefulness to you, even if it's still usable. These bins have beat up, you know, they're bent in corners, they have beat up lids, but honestly, somebody else could get a lot of use out of these, especially if they're going to throw like Christmas decorations in them and then throw them in the garage and then unpack the Christmas decorations. Like these bins would still do that job, but for me and what I need them to do, they've reached the end of their usefulness to me. And I think part of my minimalist brain moving forward as I develop, as I try to get better at how I'm living, is it's okay to let go of something that still works. And I think a lot of people are like, but it's still, I don't need it, I never use it, I never touch it, but there's nothing wrong with it, so I can't justify just getting rid of it in the most efficient way there is to get rid of it. And there are a lot of people, and I'm one of those people, I'm happier just to give something away when I'm done with it. It's not the most profitable way to live. Um, people who can figure out how, <laughs> who are more invested um, in trying to get any pennies they can get out of things they've, a, they've no longer gotten any use for, probably will make more money in life than I ever will. But I'm a person who's like, once I'm ready to get rid of it, I just want the fastest path to getting rid of it. Um, and those other kind of people profit off of me fairly frequently, <laughs> but I just get in my head. It's like, I want this thing gone. It's, it's not a part of my life anymore. It's not something I need anymore. I need it gone, but it does keep me from having, you know, moving towards that perspective. And I've struggled with the, with the sock problem as well. And not just with socks. It's just an example, um, as well. It's also like, have you ever had a travel coffee mug and you lost the lid or couldn't find the lid? Now, the reason we usually get, I'm going to go get a travel coffee. Okay. Here's my mug. I kind of love it because, like, I've decorated it with various stickers um, that I've gotten. I absolutely love this mug. It's cracking right here. Now, to me, that doesn't make it useless because I can still use this. Like, there's none. This doesn't destroy the integrity of how I use this. I usually use this for my morning tea. Tea bag's in there. And there's no liquid in here. I need to throw that tea bag away. <laughs> um... But have you ever lost the lid to your travel mug? Well, if you're just going to use this at home, yes, it still could be a cup. But it, the purpose of a travel mug is to have a lid so that it, you know, it's it's has more protection. If it's jostled around, if it spills, there's a very low, you know, escape factor to it. Um, and so that's what makes the travel mug the travel mug and not a mug. And that's why you bought it. Well, if you lose the lid, that's still a usable cup. <laughs> Sorry, it fell. I'm just failing at this. And so it's really hard to justify getting rid of the travel mug just because you lost the lid. But it now cannot do the job that you bought it for. And if you already have a cupboard full of mugs, what really point is this travel mug anymore? You wanted a travel mug, a mug that could do the things all the ceramic mugs in your cabinet couldn't do. And without a lid, it can't be a travel mug. And those are sort of the kind of philosophies I'm trying to work into my life. If it's not useful to me, if I don't really have a good justifiable reason for keeping it, I need to get it out of my space in order to feel more whole as myself. And so that's why I'm okay moving on from these. These have done their job. They've done it for a while. They've held up through a lot of changes to the van and I have no regrets about buying them nor the fact that they aren't completely falling apart at the point where I'm getting rid of them. That's all I got for this one. Just wanted to check in about that because it seemed to become a really big deal when I pulled these out of the van and said I'm not going to use them anymore because they don't fit and everybody was trying to give me suggestions on making them fit. And there were suggestions where I was like, I already have a plan. I already knew what I was going to do. And I was already happy with my conclusion. And that's not to say don't give me suggestions. But I think people, some people jump in really hard <laughs> sometimes to solve a problem that's not a problem. <laughs> All right. See you later.